All right, good morning, everybody. Um, today we're going to talk about safe lifting, um, back safety, and I'm going to introduce the power lifting method for um, proper lifting and hopefully try to help reduce some back injuries. So let's go ahead and get started. The agenda for today is we're going to look at some statistics, talk about the factors causing back injuries, a little bit about the anatomy of the back, some forces that affect the back, the traditional lifting method, the power lifting method, some do's and don'ts when lifting, and then we'll wrap it up. So before we start, ask yourself these two questions. How many backs do you get in a lifetime? And is your back getting stronger as you get older? Because everybody's getting older. So if you answered one for how many backs you get in a lifetime, you're correct. Uh, I don't know of any back transplant surgeries or anything like that yet. Um, and your back is not getting stronger as you, as you age. It's slowly um, becoming weaker. The more things you lift, the more things you do, um, it's, it, it's only getting worse for us. So you wanna take care of your back because it's very, very important with what you're doing at work. All right, some occupational injury numbers. There's 540 work injuries per hour, 12,900 work injuries per day, and 90,400 work injuries per week, which rounds out to a big 7 million work injuries per year. Um, these aren't all back injuries, but back pain accounts for more than 264 million lost work days in one year. So according to the Bureau of Labor, over a million people suffer back injuries each year. At least 36% of workers' compensation lost time claims are a result of back injuries. In the U.S., $50 billion are spent annually on medical bills, disability, and lost productivity. And 75% of back injuries are due to lifting tasks. So some of the common causes of back injuries are uh, lifting items that are too heavy, repetitive or forceful exertions, stretching and lifting, um, one of the biggest is twisting at the waist while lifting, bad posture, um, reaching above the middle of your chest, you know, things that are high on a shelf, working or sitting for long periods of time, slips, trips, and falls, a skewed perception of risk, so not understanding, um, you know, what, how your back can be injured or not realizing how heavy something is before you go to lift it. And one of the other really big ones is, is rushing and working too fast. So it might be at the end of the day, you're trying to get, you're trying to get out of there. So you're, you're lifting things that you probably should be having somebody else help you lift. So some of the common symptoms of back injury, sore and tenderness in your lower back, pain that occurs suddenly, muscle spasms, pain that increases when standing, walking, or twisting, uh, stiffness, pain that radiates uh, down your legs, buttocks, and thigh areas, and weakness in your muscles and tendons. So another contributing factor to back injuries is dehydration. So some of the common things, you know, the people are, why they're becoming dehydrated is drinking high sugar content energy drinks, excessive amounts of coffee, Alcohol, hopefully we're not talking about on the job, but the night before you're starting work, could be a Sunday night, um, excessive sweating, and not drinking enough water at the beginning of the day. If you're not staying hydrated from the start of the day, it's very hard to kind of reverse time and become hydrated, so it's very good to make sure you're drinking plenty of water throughout the day, even when you're not thirsty, to help stay hydrated. All right, so some common back injury diagnoses. A sprain is an injury due to a ligament being overstretched or torn. A strain is an injury when a muscle or tendon stretches or tears. <clears throat> Bulging disc is when the outer edge of the disc protrudes outwards. And it's usually a quarter of the perimeter portion of the disc that is affected. This, you, you know, there's, these kind of go interchangeably, but you, you've heard people talk about slip disc. That's the same as a bulging disc. Herniated disc, <clears throat> it occurs when the fluid in the disc is pushed out because of a tear in the disc lining. So this is also referred to as a ruptured disc. Here's a nice picture of a bulging disc on the top, a herniated disc. And then as you age, uh, your discs will become thinner over time. 
and that's because the your discs need fluid and water so at the age of 15 85 percent you have an 85 percent content of water in your disc at the age of 75 that's drastically decreased down to 25 percent so that's why we have you know, thinning discs and um, different problem as you age so one thing I found interesting was um, the pressure that's on your discs just doing everyday things so when you're lying flat on your bed the disc pressure is at 25 uh, pounds per square inch when you're standing it's at 100 when you're sitting upright it's at 100 when you're sitting slouched your disc pressure is between 150 and 175 psi and when you're just lifting a 25 pound box from the floor, your disc pressure is gonna be in excess of 400 pounds per square inch. <clears throat> so a couple of the forces involved when you're lifting. So it might surprise you that what lifting a 10 pound object, the amount of force it puts onto your back. So think of your back as the lever, uh, the fulcrum is at the center. So it only takes 10 pounds of pressure to lift a 10 pound object when that fulcrum is in the center. But if you shift the fulcrum to one side, so you're the person in the, in the red, um, it takes a lot more force to lift that same object. So your waist acts as a fulcrest or fulcrum um, on a 10 to one ratio. So when you lift a 100 or a 10 pound object, it puts 100 pounds of pressure on your back. When you add you know, the average human torso of 105 pounds, the total amount of pressure is 1150 pounds on your low back when you're just lifting a 10 pound object. So if you're 25 pounds overweight, you can add an additional 250 pounds of pressure for a total of 1400 pounds of pressure on your back when you're lifting something that's only 10 pounds. So keep in mind, you know, 10 pounds isn't a whole lot. People that are lifting 50 pounds, 60 pounds um, are, beer distributors that are lifting in excess of 160 pound kegs, that's a whole lot of pressure being put on your lower back. All right, so if you take a look at these two pictures. Um, Stop licking. What was that? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I think I should um, maybe mute everybody. But both of these pictures are wrong. You might think the one on the right is the correct way to lift, but you have the, the lifter, he's got his head down, he's craning his back, um, he's having to pull the load into his body. And when you're doing this, you're actually rocking on the balls of your feet and you're very imbalanced. Um, on the right side, the back is tilted forward, but it's sitting straight up. His feet are shoulder width, shoulder width apart. And this is kind of the traditional method to train how to lift properties properly. So in addition to that, when you're told to lift properly during the in the traditional method, you're told to stand with your feet shoulder width apart, bend your knees and keep your back straight. It, it does cause you to rock on your heels, uh, so your base is unstable. Um, it also forces you to use your knees and your legs, but it it does put the bear of the brunt on your on your back. So that most of that load is going to be on your back. Bending at the work at the waist is referred to as crane lifting or back lifting and making repetitive lifts like this can stretch and tear the ligaments. So these are going to heal, but it's building up scar tissue. And as you make more and more lifts, that scar tissue becomes easier to tear. That's why we have a lot of pain in our backs when we have not lifted properly. So the power lifting method was developed by Dr. Michael Schaefer. Um, he discovered that anybody that's lifting objects can pretty much remain injury free if we keep the knees bent no more than 100 degrees and avoid deep squatting. So he's worked, Dr. Schaefer has worked with FedEx, Pepsi, Coke, you know, lots of Fortune 500, 100 companies to improve their lifting. Um, and the reason why we want to improve lifting techniques is because of the soaring cost associated with back injuries. So the power lifting basics, you wanna get a wide stance. So you're gonna approach the object and with a wide stance, your feet should be wider than the object you intend to lift. Uh, we're looking for our feet to be at least more than shoulder width apart. A wide, a wide stance allows us to get closer to the load 
so that you're able to lift vertically and it keep the load in line with your body. By creating the wide stance, your knees are no longer in the way of the lift. And the wide stance also keeps the knees and upper th thighs from deep squatting. So once you've approached the object with your wide stance, you wanna bend your knees and keep your head and chest lifted. Lifting your chest and your head will help your hips to rotate forward and your back should remain in a neutral position. So we don't want our backs to be craned and curved over, but we also don't wanna keep them perfectly straight and rigid. Um, by using your, the natural curve of the spine, less pressure will be put on your lower back. And your back has lots of large muscles, so we wanna use those and not sit up straight with a very you know, um, rigid, rigid spine because we wanna use those muscles. The idea with getting the wide stance is to keep the object in line with your body. And when you lift like this, it should be similar to uh, the way an elevator lifts. So you're lifting straight up, um, you know, between your legs and up to your belly, instead of craning over and doing a, a back lift. So if you take a look at this picture, the worker's feet remain on a stable base. He, you can see how much wider his feet are than what the traditional lifting um, method is. He is definitely wider than his shoulders. He's wider than the box. And you can see that his knees only have to bend to about 100 degrees rather than 90 or 65 degrees and in getting into that deep squat position. I always show this picture to our beer distributors because it's kind of funny. This is uh, Grandel Strawson and he's a strong man and he's throwing the kegs overhead. We don't wanna teach that, but you can see that he, his feet are wider than what he's lifting. He's picking it straight up and keeping it in line with his body. His heels are off the ground, and that's because he's creating the momentum to throw it over his shoulder, throw it over his head, but you can see the wide stance and how he's keeping that load straight in line with his body. All right, so some things you should do when you're lifting. You have to get mentally ready for every lift regardless of the size. Um, you wanna make a solid base so you're spreading your feet wider than what you're lifting and you wanna keep the object close and aligned with your body. You wanna lift with your hands and not your fingers. So a lot of times we will grab things and use a partial grip, which is using the tips of your finger. You wanna to try to tip the load and get up underneath it so that you're holding it with your hands and not just the tips of your fingers. Uh, pivot your feet or take small steps to avoid twisting and turning and readjust the load or your position when you lift to try to avoid twisting or turning when you're lifting. The twisting and the turning while lifting is, it just, it makes the, it puts the, makes the pressure on the spine so much worse and so many more injuries happen because of the twist and the turn when we're lifting. So plan your lift. Before you lift, what, you know, the tools, a box or equipment, ask yourself these questions. Do you need to lift the item manually? Is there something that you can use instead of having to lift it yourself? How heavy is it? Where are you moving the item from? Is it high up on a shelf or is it down low on the floor? Where are you taking it? Where does it have to go? How far is your walk gonna be? Um, is there a certain route that you have to follow? Are you gonna go up steps or down steps or is there multiple, you know, might have to go up a couple steps onto landing, landing and through the door? Uh, is there a designated walkway? for pedestrians walking through a warehouse? And are there gonna be other people around you, including moving equipment and forklifts that you need to be able to see uh, so that you don't run into them and so that they don't hit you? So you wanna check the object before you attempt to lift it. So you wanna test every load before you lift it. You can kind of push it, with, nudge it with your feet, you can kind of nudge it with your hands and see how big the object is. Keep in mind the, um, the size of the box might not indicate how heavy it is. You might have a very small box that you have something very heavy or a very large box that's just awkward to carry, but it's very light. Make sure that the load you're lifting is packed correctly when at all possible. Um, have your, make sure your employees are packing boxes and balancing the weight if there's multiple items in a box so that the shifting doesn't uh, cause a worker to become unbalanced. Couple things you don't want to do when you're lifting. Like we've talked about, you don't want to deep squat with your legs going below parallel. 
you don't want to hold your breath. So before you lift something, you want to exhale when you start the lift, and then you want to continue, step, continue steady breathing until you lower the object in your nose and out your mouth. Obviously, don't twist or rotate. Don't lose your balance or lose your grip. Um, or I'm sorry, if you lose your balance or lose your grip, you don't want to crane your back over to lower the load because you can still injure yourself when you're lowering something. So if at all possible, you want to drop whatever it is that you're losing your grip on or if you're starting to fall in a, the safest way possible, um, making sure that the object doesn't land on your body or your toes. And something that I always bring up during lifting training is lift like a toddler. So if you've ever been around toddlers, you will see that they lift everything almost the pro almost you know the proper powerlifting way. They'll run up to it, their feet are wide, they bend down to get it, and they bring it into their body, keep it in line with their body, and then they run off with it. And I've had four of these come through my house, and I've watched all of them. They do lift properly. Why is that? I, I can't tell you. It's just the body's natural instinct. They've never been trained how to lift. They don't have many bad habits, but they're lifting the correct way. So to wrap things up, back injuries can bring negative consequences for the injured employee as well as the entire company. So the employee can have a decrease in income, a decline, a decline quality of life, you know, your hobbies, what you like to do at home, they may suffer because of a work injury, long-term pain, and also the uncertainty of be, being able to return to the to your old job and perform the previous job functions that are required for that job. Some of the, the negative consequences for a company are increased insurance premiums, loss of production, the morale of a crew if somebody is injured in that crew, um, hiring temporary workers, and you know depending on the injuries uh, and the circumstances, possible OSHA penalties. I believe that back injuries can be prevented when employees are trained and they also have to recognize the impact of every lift. So to, regardless of the weight, regardless of how far they have to carry it, they need to understand that lifting everything properly is very important to their health. Practicing and observing employees, utilizing the power lift should be a component of your lifting training program. So um, you can preach and teach and show videos, but if your employees are not following the proper you know, guidelines for lifting, then everything that's done in the classroom or everything that's done in the toolbox talk, talk doesn't ma matter. So you want to make sure you're observing them lifting the proper way. And also, it's a really good idea to develop a pre-shift uh, stretching program um, to make sure that everybody is warmed up and ready to begin the day. If you look at any type of sport that's played, you know, a game usually lasts two to three hours. Um, you know, the athletic position, getting getting themselves ready, those athletes are not going out into a game uh, cold or, you know, just coming straight from home and playing. They're warming up for a long time. So it's important to make sure that your workers are warmed up before the day because they may be working eight to 10 hours lifting things all day long. And so you wanna make sure that they show up and they're ready to go and their muscles are loosened up. So that concludes our safe lifting, power lifting episode this week. Um, my name is Michael Williams. And if you have any questions, comments, um, you can, we can discuss any of those now or um, you can send me an email, give me a call. So I'll just throw it out. Does anybody have any questions today about power li powerlifting? Hey, Michael, uh, Steve Billings. Um, can you talk about a little bit about the average time away from work from uh, some of these injuries? For a, for a lost time injury, the average time away from work is six weeks. Um, it, you know, different Different studies are going to say different things between four and six weeks. Um, once you get past that six week mark, the percentage or the chances of an employee coming back to work start to decline rapidly. So on average between four and six weeks, but once you, once you hit that six week mark, that employee's prospects of returning to work start to decline dramatically. Okay, how are you? Well, 
Does anybody else have any other questions? All right, well, if that's it, I appreciate you guys showing up today. And uh, this will be emailed out to all the producers. And if you're looking for uh, any additional information, um, just let me know. And I appreciate y'all being here today. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Michael.